This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Wild Strawberries, directed by Ingmar Bergman from 1957. The synopsis here from Letterboxd, crotchety retired Dr. Isaac Borg travels from <laughs> it Stockholm. It doesn't say that, does it? Wait, 100% does. Crotchety old oh, man? Oh, let me bring you this up in a bit. Okay, sorry, do it again, but I crotchety retired doctor Isaac Borg travels from Stockholm to Lund, Sweden with his pregnant and unhappy daughter-in-law Marianne in order to receive an honorary degree from his alma mater. Along the way, they encounter a series of hitchhikers, each of whom cause the elderly doctor to muse upon the pleasures and failures of his own life. These include the vivacious young Sarah, a dead ringer for the doctor's own first love. <gasps> So I was going to get this one out here. There's like quite a few reviews and comments and stuff like that. Just talk like as descriptions of like of uh, Isaac. And I'm just like, where, who, why are they just parroting the same information over and over again of like is miserable and like just weird character assassinations of this guy. Mm. Cause I didn't find him that like particularly bitter, weird. From, I, th- I don't know. The way I got it was that it was like implied that it was before, but no, you're right. In the course of this movie, he's not super unpleasant. Like, yeah. if anything, he's actually a pretty nice dude. He picks up some hitchhikers, he yeah. like has lunch with them. But yeah, I think it's like the way I took it was that it was implied for before. But no, he's he, he seems okay. Yeah, he seems okay. I I, I don't know. Seems all right. So, <sighs> Wall Strawberries. So this is a mm-hmm. long overdue first time watch for me. Um, yes. Yeah. So I've never seen this one before. Uh, so this this is uh, Bergman. This came out in that sweet spot mm-hmm. of when I first started collecting Criterion's, um, and like because I, I remember like well actually the next movie uh, I have a story about that eight and a half, but uh, yeah this came out right in that window of time where you had like this string you had this Rashomon this eight and a half coming out and you're like whoa this Wild Strawberries is out there too, but uh, so this and this movie's got this like reputation that precedes itself. It's mm-hmm. it's Bergman's other masterpiece. It's it's his other uh, uh, seventh seal. It's, it's, Is that what people say? I think so. Like when you read a lot of people, their glowing praise of this thing. It's it's off the hook. They're always talking about it. Woody Allen. Mm-hmm. Woody Allen's made like what four different oh. movies doing this thing. He loves yeah. this movie. It's about about an academic, about like kind of a a family in disarray, people who don't mm-hmm. like one another. It has these intense real dramas playing out between people. Uh, there's a lot of in, in this death about dying and stuff like that, mm-hmm. looking back at your life and kind of having these fantasies and stuff like that. It's it's total uh, Allen territory. Um, mm-hmm. But you know what? I've always had read this description about this crotchety retired doctor, and uh, I was always kind of like. I don't know if I'm going to be super into this movie. Like, I, I just, mm-hmm. don't, I don't know. But I felt that same way about uh, Yasujiro Ozu's movies, like something like sure. Good Morning or Tokyo Story. Like, you read mm-hmm. these, you know, you read the back of that box at the video store, looking around, looking for things, and you're like, I don't know. It doesn't sound like there's going to be any, like, chainsaw deaths or, like, people, like, you know, running around in masks, uh sieging the uh, police station or something like that. These movies aren't those types of things. What movies are you thinking about? <laughs> the best kind. Who? What movie is there where people siege a police station? Uh, Solo Precinct 13 from director John Carpenter. Mm, questionable. Yeah. It's true. There's a couple of these types of deals out there. Rio Continue, Bravo. Huh? you crotchety old man. Yeah. So uh, what did I think about this movie? Eh? Yeah, I I actually, I kind of suspected this. Wow. Okay. And that's fine. You tell me, tell me your rub on this, this okay. bad boy. You know, so, okay. So this is for me in our creep. Uh, mm-hmm. This is mid tier Bergman. Uh, sure. Like for, for the movies we have talked about previously, Seventh Seal, uh, mm-hmm. Autumn Sonata. I mean, these those movies are like, I, I think Autumn Sonata is like, like a great movie. Um mm-hmm. But I gotta yes, say, I agree. this movie I feel is like kind of for me, kind of on the same level as like Cries and Whispers, which again, for some okay. people, that movie's like people love that movie. Uh, mm-hmm. I think that the movie looks great. Uh, it's not a perfect movie. And this had that similar feeling to me. And the biggest thing though, uh, and one day we'll talk about this movie, but mm-hmm. after you watch Fanny and Alexander, uh, it's like he, he does everything that he ever wanted to do with that movie. And so when you're watching sometimes his older stuff, 
these mm-hmm. dr- these dramas, you're kind of like, oh, he did that better. He he's already topped himself, but it took him like twenty years to figure everything out. Yeah. Um. So for me, it's kind of like, oh, this is movie movie feels like such a letdown in comparison to like what sure. I guess I was expecting. Because at times, to me, this is like this is like the this is like Big Fish, <laughs> like uh, it, Tim Burton's Big Fish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it kind of like that's that movie came to mind. It felt like um, this is the sort of if this movie got made today. This mm-hmm. would be like the movie people would be laughing about being like, oh, that's just Oscar bait. That's the movie mm-hmm. that like they're just gonna go, the, the the guy's gonna get like a, a nod at the uh, Academy, and this movie about like finding himself, and oh, it's all about cis heterosexual white males, <laughs> and like and everyone uh. just gonna be like just like whatever, who cares about this movie? It's not about anything real, and uh, it'll be like, totally forgotten about. That's kind Who would of you cast as Isaac today. Uh, Daniel, uh, I, Day, I, Daniel Day Lewis and old man or Christian Bale, perhaps, you know who I think would be good. <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. Is he retired? What? Anthony Hopkins is retired, I think, but he came back for Odin. That we'll was get a, Gene Hackman out here to, uh, uh, uh reprises. Uh, also retired and, uh, probably also has dementia. Uh, well, we could get Kirk Douglas to, uh, rise from the grave to, uh, <laughs> play Isaac. Oh, he's alive. Uh, anyway. Mm. So what are my problems with this movie? So yeah, this, movie, this movie's not that long. It's an hour and a yeah. half. I'm all about those run times. Mm-hmm. I felt this movie, I don't know, kind of dragged, mm-hmm. <laughs> strangely mm-hmm. enough. Um, I found that the vo- voiceover narration that this movie kicks off with didn't really work for me. It's so sure. it, it's so explicit. It just is kind of like, this is what the movie's going to be about. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. like the whole movie is like, Oh, I'm driving on this road and everything that I ever did is on the road. And so it's it's very like this <laughs> yeah. it's this very okay. it's like a literal metaphor. Mm-hmm. Like it's kind of like seriously, it's like I get this idea like um of that, you know, in Sweden it's not a very big place and like this idea that you wouldn't really leave the vicinity of where you were yeah. going, but also it's like the fact that they drove. And it's like, "Oh, but he was going to fly originally." And you're like, "It wasn't that long big of a long of a trip, was it?" Um, like wh- why would you need to fly it's the at better all? part of a morning? <laughs> yeah. It's like, that seems like a lot of resources to go fly, but I guess always oh, an old man. Mm-hmm. He, it's, it's too uncomfortable to take this drive. He, he's going to fly in style. He's, he's a doctor. God damn it. He's got money. Mm-hmm. To, he's got that money to throw around. Anyway, yeah. these, these are like weird nitpicky things that I'm just laying out there. Yeah. No, <laughs> get them all out, man. Get them. <laughs> hit, hit it. So, okay. The plot itself, uh, of an old man reflecting on a rather unspectacular life. I mean, What's going on in this movie that's like t- is like worthy of film telling? I guess. I mean, and you can do a good version of these stories. Like you can tell like a, a spectacular life and tell it wonderfully. I don't know if this movie is like that gr- well told or that astonishingly told in that way that like when people talk about Ingmar Bergman, you talk about like this like master dramatist who gets down to the minutia of like day to day life of humanity and people and stuff like that, all through like the eyes, of course, like of like a Swedish man uh, with like these like beautiful statuesque Swedish women everywhere that with like glowing platinum hair. Um, but at the same time, like the drama is like, Oh, you get these scenes that like you get the dinner table scene. And it's like, Oh, when you watch Fanny and Alexander, you get like 10 of those, uh, mm-hmm. but they're like exciting and interesting in this. They're kind of just like there. And I'm kind of like, who are all these characters? They're, they're, it seems like it's like a, research project more of like him figuring out ideas. Cause I've seen the real deal come down the road where it's like mm-hmm. so polished and uh, like so involving. Um, let's see here. And then, okay. So there's that element of like what the movie's about, which is uh, we got our man, our uh, Mr. Borg, Dr. Borg. He's, he's going to go get mm-hmm. this honorary doctorate from his university. And uh, on the way with his like, son's wife who I guess like the movie the synopsis from Letterbox where he tells us she's pregnant but that's kind of a reveal uh, is about, which is like oh because that's like mm-hmm. a, a, that's a poignant moment I guess uh, and they're picking up hitchhikers who are youthful young exciting people and like I mean, I'd find them extremely annoying, but I would never in my life pick up hitchhikers. That seems to be a thing that maybe you did back in 1957. I don't know. Are, if people are you saying you wouldn't like people to play music outside your window at like two in the morning when you're trying to sleep? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, okay. Um, and then, of course, getting run off the road by a couple of very angry middle-aged people. Um, <laughs> the Jarrett's of the world. Oh, yeah, man. So, okay. 
one of the, one of the the first really good scene in this movie is uh that guy <laughs> the, the yelling husband. at his wife oh man that is so brutal that is uh mm-hmm. that is some that is some cringe cinema that guy sucks yeah. so bad and when she lights him up with fucking slaps it's like you don't even get it but you're like mm-hmm. oh finally and then when they dump him on the side of the road it's so like depressing and like kind of <laughs> like sad because you're just like oh there's like no helping this and you want it as far away from you as you can um, mm-hmm. and then it just kind of continues on with these like check marks of like, oh, let's stop by my mom's house, which is also on this road, and she's kind of mm-hmm. weird, right? And then oh, your son's like kind of an asshole, saying, hey, go get an abortion. I don't want to have this kid. Um, I got to pay back <laughs> my bills. And uh, then they get to school. You get big fancy, uh, ridiculously fancy like uh, ceremony that's like a far cry from a. Uh, any sort of a ceremony now at a university here in 2018, which is lots of, I don't know, it feels like flip flops and yoga pants abound <laughs> rather than like uh, tails and uh, fancy ties. Well, when I got my master's, they uh, crowned me with a top hat. Oh, did they? Well, not the university. Oh. People I know did. At, at the bar? At the bar? Yeah, you were there. <laughs> I, I wasn't there for the, the hat. Oh. Um, I remember it was the, a pizza I, hut. I, there, there, there was karaoke. There is video of the karaoke, though. That does exist somewhere in the world. We can make that a Patreon goal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Continue about uh, the unimpressive uh, <laughs> um, crowning, or impressive, I guess, is what you were saying. Okay. So yeah. You so this is like that's like the a plot, and then sure. on the on the flip side is you get these uh, these Ebenezer Scrooge esque kind of like daydream yeah. nightmares mm-hmm. and they're just kind of like i don't know i i could see people having like a uh making a lot of this stuff um for instance mm-hmm. like uh for some like actually i found these the image really stressful of like a t- uh, a timepiece without hands mm-hmm. that's i don't know that kind of like gave me like fits it's like oh that 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 bothers me way more than it should. Uh, th- that's that I can't tell what time it is. I I don't like mm-hmm. this at all. I don't know. It told me a lot about myself. He and didn't it, like it either, Jerry. No, no one should like it. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, time is important. Being being on time is very important, RJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, so and then you get faceless man, and then then he like collapses into goo, and then there's horses, and there's stuff, and. Get these like I don't know. Get these like sur- some semi surrealist kind of like d- dreamy things. Kind of remind me of Spellbound with the faceless guy, but not without Salvador Dali mm. laying down what dreams are really like. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Real limp, flaccid uh, gears and clocks. Yeah, dripping in a mm-hmm. landscape. Um, how about that, Max von Sydow? <laughs> Oh, as a helpful gas station attendee <laughs> with a mustache. I I, I I had a pretty good chuckle at uh, him because it's like, oh, it's Max on side out. Because I saw him in the credits. I'm like, oh, what does he do in this? I was like, oh, he's a gas station attendant. He's not this like gallant knight playing uh, nope. de- death and chess or anything like that. So mm-hmm. that was kind of funny. Um, yeah, man, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't get it. I don't know why uh, people still talk about this movie in high regard. It's not bad, like, mm-hmm. at all. Like, I'm not saying that, but, like, after watching it, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't know. If, if I feel like you, you, you take away Bergman's name on this and you put someone else there, maybe people would like it more because it's like, oh, it's not even a Bergman movie. It's like, this is like, mm-hmm. this, this new young, this voice of, of a movie director we've never heard of has directed this movie. Everyone should watch it. But I feel like the same movie transposed, like, 50 years later, and it's kind of like, oh, people still kind of make these movies and we kind of laugh at them. So what mm-hmm. makes this one special? Because I feel like watching it, there was not enough big moments in it that I was like, mm-hmm. yes, wild strawberries. Finally, it's in my life. And I can add this to like, like, wow, I'm proud I finally watched it. It's kind of like, oh, that's it, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, you heard it here first. Jarrett Duncan hates Ingmar Bergman. Probably <laughs> hates Ingrid Bergman too, just for the hell of it. Yeah. Yeah, they, why not? Lousy Swedes. Mm. Why not... Uh... Ooh, that wasn't English. What uh, what all else you got to say there, big guy? Oh, I'll, I'll hand it off to you there, Hoss. Oh yeah, to me. Uh, so yeah, this is a this is a rare treat. We are we're kind of in the uh, the inverse positions here, where I am the authority. Uh, I'm going to take reign of uh, Bing well, you're Bergman. The, you're here. the defender. I am the defender of this movie. Uh, I I actually like this movie quite a bit. Is it super awesome? No. 
Uh, it's not seventh seal good. Uh, I also agree. I do think Autumn Sonata is better than this as well. Mm. Um, that's why I was surprised that you said that uh, this is in such high regard, which I didn't even really realize, which I'll, 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 I'll get to with my story with Wild Strawberries. But I would have always thought Fanny and Alexander was bigger than Wild Strawberries, which maybe it is to criterion chumps like us. But uh, I guess no one's going to be watching Bergman if they're not criterion chumps. This is very true because I don't think there's anything that's Bergman that's not in the Criterion Collection. Yeah, well, very, very little. Like his last movie, maybe, but yeah, his last one is that the Sa- remake of Sa- Halloween. Yeah, yeah, that one called Sarah Band. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, I've seen Wild Strawberries before, and I'll give you a little bit about my my story with Wild Strawberries, which is I think in part. Uh, why I like this movie quite a bit. Um, so yeah, I, I do really like wild strawberries. I think it's wicked cool, uh, for a few reasons. So this movie was given to me, uh, by my old boss, like my old PI at uh, the university. Um, like a private investigator, primary investigator. Yeah. So, uh, like all these professors, like science ones, at least, I don't know outside of sciences, but, um, like the main research profs. Uh, so like in our lab, we studied learning and memory and, uh, me and him talked about movies all the time and with learning and stuff, he like, we were talking about movies and he asked me what, like some of my favorite movies were. And, uh, one of my all time faves I've mentioned before is eternal sunshine. Uh, so I was bringing that up and he was like, you know what I think you would like is wild strawberries. And uh, I was like, really? And uh, I know that might seem weird, no. but there are, there are things that I connect between the two. So the reason my boss likes Wild Strawberries is because it's all about memory and reflection. Uh, but it's also about like this dro- the sad nature of research, I think, and that academic pursuit. Uh, so this is kind of like what uh, I was talking about last week in the preamble about First Man, where it's that like, that career drive that like overpowers everything else. Uh, I think which it's only really like what you were saying, this guy doesn't seem like that bad of a guy. It's just kind of alluded to a lot. Right. But I, I, I really, um, sympathize, sympathize and understand where he's coming from and the way that they build up his like background, because that's kind of like what I thought, uh, with research. And I think a lot of people get, that vibe by the time they go through it. Not everyone, like, I don't know what it would be, maybe not even 50, 50, but uh, a lot of the people that I was with, that was kind of what it was like. People got really burned out by it. And then you see these older crotchety uh, professors or doctors and you kind of feel sad for them at sometimes, like not all of them either. Like there's some guys who, who just love what they do and that's awesome. But there are also people who are so, overtaken by their their research that they don't really have anything else and i think it kind of puts you into a corner for a lot of other life things so i relate or i i like this movie because i have a special way to relate to it whereas like that was in part some of my experience when i was doing academic research and one of the reasons that I didn't really want to pursue it anymore afterwards. So this is very personal to me, but uh, I think it's why not? Why why not tell this story? I'm usually the guy who's making fart jokes and and all that stuff. So here's a little emotional uh, background to uh, my character, Jarrett, in case uh, our three fans were wondering. Um, but I I do really like it, and I think it's I think it's kind of accurate for this like 50 year old movie. And I I think you can still find that a lot today with uh, professors. So I relate to it for, for those reasons. I also really like some of the way, like I just kind of like this movie about where it builds up on like guilt and penance and regret in regards to those things. And I dig that. Uh, And then I also, I like the memory stuff because I just really like, uh, I mean, obviously, that's what my thesis was on, was on memory. So I dig it. 
I like that stuff. And uh, I've always liked dream world sequences. And like you were talking about, uh, this first one, I think is really cool. I, I love the clock thing. Uh, I like when the carriage is stuck. I like the melting goo man. I think that's pretty rad. Uh, his later ones, I think they get a little too explorative, uh, explorative where he's like venturing off into things that he wasn't really a part of, but it's his own mind and probably things the way I took it was these are probably things he's thought about his whole life. And now he's just like kind of dreaming about them. Well, there's like, the, there's, the, there's like the test and the uh, interrogation esque type. of Yeah. One. Well, that one, uh, the one I, I, I think about more is um, when he's at his family's dinner, but he wasn't actually there. So it's not really his memory, but I kind of, I relate to that also where there's a lot of things that I wasn't actually a part of, but you either think about it so much or you hear about it from other people where it becomes part of your memory. And then you have this idea of how that situation or event kind of played out, even though it might not actually be accurate or realistic in a way. So I, that that's one thing that I like as well. I do think that some of his dreams are a little too much, like in, in a few regards, but uh, I like that mostly. Uh, I thought his dreams were uh, equal parts Empire Strikes Back, which I think just really lifted <laughs> oh, from yeah. uh, his first dream. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Barney Gumbel's uh, short film about alcoholism. <laughs> I was also getting vibes on this. Uh, don't cry for me. I'm already dead. <laughs> um, I, I really like that. And then I actually kind of like the framing of this story with the hitchhikers where and the journey that he goes on, because I think it does a really good job of having parallels with his past, which is what the movie's about, but then also parallels with his future, like with his mother, where she's like this shitty old lady that no one wants to be around. And he's kind of like, oh, is that me now? Am I the same person? But then he sees it in his son as well and uh, his daughter-in-law. But then in the Hitchhikers too, there's like those playful, the playful youth that he kind of was and then you have those really bitter ass uh hateful married middle age people which he experienced as well so i think at each point of this it's like a good parallel to for him to kind of have an introspective like look at himself it's like well where does this fit or where, where does my life fit in these experiences which is i think what a lot of people do it's like how does this relate to me um, so I think that stuff is all really cool. And those are reasons why I like this. Uh, I also, I, I really like the jokes in this movie, uh, like the old bickering, but the way that some things are set up where like when the lady has a cigarette, he's like, no smoking for women. He's like, that's undignified. And he's like, hand me a cigar, babe. He's like, smoking is a vice of men. Uh, like it's a lot of like really quick ones like that, where he'll say something but then he'll do the opposite. And I'm like, yeah, I like that. That's uh, that's funny. That's real funny, Jarrett. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to read my notes here, but they're a little bit scraggly. Um, Was it because mm, your uh, tears ran from your face and, and just distorted uh, the image? There is talk of women's tears. That's two weeks in a row where not to trust a woman's tears. Mm. Uh, I think in this one it says, don't get in the way of a woman's tears. And I was like, ooh, shit. Uh, one quote I thought was really funny is when his like his cousin is telling him, or like his old wife, whatever, is telling him about stuff. And uh, it's like, she maybe it's his cousin basically like breaks up with him and is like smile don't why won't you smile and he's got like real sadness in him i like that scene but then i think it's really funny where the way she's talking she's basically like why don't you smile you sad sack of shit like kind of lays it on as she's trying to like cheer him up i was like oh yeah that's good stuff i like it but i do know what you mean uh like your criticisms i do think there are some inconsistencies with the narration that I think throw it off a little bit. And uh, I do, it does kind of, it really falls into, I think a common, common, like well tre treaded ground. Was it at the time? I don't know, maybe, right. but uh, just yeah. the, not even the story itself, but the structure of the story where it's like, here's this, there's, he does this. And then there's that. So it is, it is like very, 
well covered. It's it's been done before. <laughs> yeah, so it feels. Like I, I understand yeah. your criticisms. Well, if, if, yeah, I mean, there's definitely uh, elements of the movie where it feels like this would be a great uh, project or a, a movie for like a writing a film essay because sure. it's like, oh, it's got all these elements to pull on. Look at oh, you can really break it down and write like ten pages on this. And you, one, I'm sure people have, uh, and they've written longer, but it's, it's it has that kind of vibe to it. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't enjoy watching this movie a great deal. Like, it's kind of just like, yeah, yeah, this is a movie. It's happening. This, the scenes, it never, uh, it never grabbed me. Yeah, and, and that's totally fine. Like, that was kind of, to be honest, that's kind of why I, I wanted to lay out why I actually like this movie quite a bit. Well, I'm curious I, why, why you thought thought I wasn't going to be crazy about this movie. But not before I had rewatched it because I I think when I watched this originally it was probably like 3 years ago. Mm-hmm. But uh just watching it now, I don't know, there were certain aspects of it. I was like I don't know if Jared's going to be on board with all this. I thought that you would like the dream sequences and I thought that you would like the shitty stuff, like <laughs> like the shitty married couple. Yep. But I thought um there were certain scenes that I thought uh I thought wouldn't land with you because they were maybe a little too fluffy. Like uh, when they stopped to pick flowers and when they like <laughs> sing to him outside of his, his room, like, like wake him up. I was like, I don't think Jarrett's going to be on board with that stuff because to be perfectly honest, I'm not really on board with that stuff either. But uh, the things I like about this movie outweigh the things I don't like. So I, uh, those reasons mostly is uh, there were certain things that, I was like, yeah, I don't know if this is going to land with Jarrett. Mm. Yeah, I do but, have a, uh, a heart of coal. You do? Yeah. Hmm. It, it takes a lot to, to like, really get to me. And if it's, like, this sort of stuff, it's kind of like, yeah, it's, I see what you're doing, but it's not, it's, not, yep. it's not flying. It's not it's not going hard enough. It's not going in the right way. I get it. Like I said, I, I understand your criticisms, and uh, I mostly uh, – echo those to an extent like i i feel the same way for a lot of that stuff but uh no i don't know i i have a deeper bond with this movie it really speaks to me Jarrett. Yeah. but uh no i don't know i i did this movie for a lot of personal reasons so i'm not the most objective critic of it i guess did you know rj that uh bergman wrote the screenplay uh while in hospital well, because he was being treated uh, for two months for recurrent gastric problems and general stress. I thought you were going to say recurrent gas, and I I thought that was super funny. Yeah. So just stick with that, okay? Gastric problems. It seems like it's. Uh... Uh, do you think he was just blowing ass a lot? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, Answer I'll, the question. I'll, I'll leave it to you. I'll leave it to you and the listeners. Okay. Well, uh, I did not know that, but uh, that's fun. So, you know what? You know what? He was probably like super sick and alone and lonely and was just like contemplating his life. And he's like, what is he's like, what is all this horse shit that I've done in my life? Right. Was it worth it to be the man who brought the world this movie, these movies? Was it worth it to be the man who discovered Max Van Cito <laughs> and did troll uh Troll Jurgen or <laughs> the magic flute. The magic flute. Troll flirt. <laughs> was it worth it? Yeah. He, Jared? Had, he, he hadn't made that yet, but yeah, he would one day. Was it worth it? Yeah. Jared? I don't know. But I wonder, RJ, who what? who hates wild strawberries? Um there, there's a I'm sh- so I'm sure there's a small contingent. Yeah. So th- this jumps around a little bit because there's a lot of uh, one-liners that I just skipped over, but so you can keep up with me here. So sure. first up here is Jamie, uh, one okay. star. In high school, I was forced to watch this because the president of our film club was super pretentious and obsessed with making us watch old philosophical movies that don't make any sense. And every day, I pray to God and beg him to give me back the one hour and 33 minutes I spent watching this movie. How dare someone make me watch a movie that you actually have to think about? If you're considering watching this movie, do yourself a favor and instead just pop in your Romy and Michelle, oh, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion high school DVD reunion. and put it on your moisturizing mm-hmm. face serum and go to bed. Maybe they're being facetious. Um, they're not. That is one of their favorite movies. So uh, interesting. I, it seems like 
there's a there's a tone shift there, and then it's like, oh no, they're actually saying sincere. that, but it sounds sarcastic. <laughs> it does sound sarcastic. Yeah, this person really likes rom coms and movies like Freaky Friday, the Jamie Lee Curtis smash remake, Big Fat Liar with Frankie Muniz, uh, Parent Trap with Lindsay Lohan, Ferris Bueller. Uh, movies like The Big Sick. Hmm. Movies like The Big Sick. <sighs> and Edward Scissorhands, for some reason, which seems out of place. You know, I, I don't... I'm wondering why this person's at a film club. I also am wondering why this person... They have a list, movies I watched like 500 times as a kid because I was an obsessive only child who's life revolved around TV. Uh, Lizzie McGuire, Freaky Friday, Parent Trap. seems like that's the only movies this person likes. Okay. <laughs> and they have a letterbox account. Um, yeah. Grammy Boy XD. Oh, Grammy Boy. Yeah. Two stars. Kind of hard to be moved or touched when you're bored to death. I know this film is about death, but I doubt its intentions is to make viewers feel like they are dying while watching the film excruciatingly slow, dull, blunt, and pretentious. I find it interesting that they talk about pretension. Yeah. Pretension. And uh, they got a lot of love for Call Me By Your Name, Arrival, Ooh. the Star Wars movies, your favorite movie, Manchester by the Sea. <laughs> <sighs> Daniel Mosley, two stars. It's not that this film was overly bad. Victor Sh uh, Schostrom in the lead was actually quite good. It was more that it just became boring after the weird surreal dream sequence. Borg would think back on his childhood dreams to his mother nagging at the dinner table. And my God, that woman would not stop bitching. Why would you want to remember that of all things? This and the biggest annoyance of the film being every young person, period. He meets a young girl traveling with two guys after his first reminiscence, and she just kind of invites herself and companions for a lift in his car. She then proceeds to be annoying as hell, and he eats it up. Oh, what young blondes do to old men. Perhaps I just don't get it, but I thought at one point I knew for sure where the film was heading, only to be left with an ending that not only didn't go that route, but made the entire rest of the film seem like a waste of time. <laughs> mm. That's uh. That's a sizzling take. I don't know. Like that seems to be exactly where the movie's going to go. I wasn't really listening to what you were talking about. <laughs> uh, I'm too involved in their their favorite movies, which I'll get to. But they have a list of movies, and it's called "How Did This Movie Get Made?" And I have some drastic as, different opinions as from this. Person. In the podcast, because there's a podcast called that. Is that what this thing is about? Uh, there is. A oh, it is. Yeah. Well, fuck this podcast. They're talking about movies like Tango and Cash. Yeah. What do you in Congo? Those are good movies. Come on. Sleepaway Camp, Cobra with Stallone. Yes. Yeah. There's a, it's a podcast with the uh, oh, what's his name? There's a comedian and a bunch of people involved. It's a very it's a very popular podcast. Whatever. This person's five star movies, Jared, include Three Billboards Over Ebbing, Missouri, Ooh. Die Hard, Ooh. I Saw the Devil. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that movie stinks. Uh, Avengers, Infinity War, oh. La La Land, oh, your man. favorite movie, In Bruges, uh, Chasing Amy, Clerks. Oh. <laughs> uh, shall I continue? Pirates of the Please, Caribbean no. 1. No. The Breakfast no. Club. No. Uh, Jurassic Park, The Green Mile. What? All right. Ready for one oh. more? Yeah. Yeah, hit it. Two and a half stars, watched by Fair. Uh, that's P H E R. It Ooh. took me a full hour and 20 minutes in to realize that most of Deconstructing Harry, one of my favorite movies ever, is an homage to Wild Strawberries. That being said, wasn't really feeling it. So, uh, as I was mentioned before, uh, there's Woody Allen basically loves this Wild Strawberries and has made like four different versions of it. And Deconstructing Harry, uh, his like, Ode to Walt Strawberry slash uh, author Philip Roth is exactly this movie where it's like him uh, going through his old life and him like being a piece of shit, dating women and going, what the fuck? It's the most sweary Woody Allen's ever been in his life. And actually, I think the movie's actually, it's the last time I watched it, I really liked it because it's just like so different from Woody Allen. And uh, I guess by that measure is better than Walt Strawberry's until I rewatch it. Do you want to hear something weird? What's that? So this fur person... 
this happens every fucking week. I didn't say it before because I was like, whatever, that's a, a that's a common movie. But the last three people who have begged on uh, Wild Strawberries all have whiplash in their favorite films. Huh. Not five stars, but in their favorite films, which I find really weird because Whiplash is also a movie about like obsession and things like that. And it's like I know that that's not super uh, obvious in Wild Strawberries, but the undertones are there. Uh, this person also has five stars for Die Hard. So I don't know. <laughs> it's just weird that Whiplash is like uh, these people's champion movies, but they just shit on Wild Strawberries. I mean, there's those are like such. I don't know. I don't even see a link. Like I see like there's such different experiences. While I'm here, you know what I fucking hate. I've mentioned before. There's a bunch of reviews here where like one says two and a half stars, forty three out of one hundred. Why give it a number representation when you already have the star thing? It's like oh, it's more accurate when you got numbers. You shut up. <laughs> don't do that. Shut up. <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Uh, hey, yeah, I have good opinions on things, Jared. That's what the fans want. <laughs> That's what they want. So yeah, mm-hmm. anyway, Wild Strawberries, uh, just kind of there for me. RJ's a fan, but uh, hey, folks, watch Fanny and Alexander. Watch that six-hour cut. That that is some. That is awesome. So good. <laughs> yeah, that that six-hour cut is actually really good. Yeah, it's it's like I remember like after watching, I was like, oh, I didn't want it to end. How many six-hour movies can you say that about? Mm, at least one in the, that director's cut of tree of life. That's 20 hours long oh, or that infinity war thing. That's a, a million hours long. You could always watch, I don't know, Satan tango, some Bella tar films. Those are fun. Who's Satan? Uh, tango and cash. Yep. One of the same mm. after the break. Um, I don't know. Like, we're going to go for a drive and conveniently every single element of our past is just conveniently on that road. And we're going to reminisce and, uh, we're going to wind up happy on the other side with doctorate degrees. That's pretty cool. Um, that's kind of like our normal life though. Yeah. Doctorate in podcasting. (laughs) Uh, you're pretty close to that. Getting there, getting there. 